name is Glenn Michael Chuck. I am the local president of the Association of United Ukrainian Canadians. We are going to begin today's event with a processional performed by the Winnipeg Mandolin Orchestra and the Festival Choir. The song is called Together Comrades as One. This song was first printed as part of a compilation of socialist songs published in 1909 by one of the organizers of the Federation of Ukrainian Social Democrats of Canada. The choir will sing the song in Ukrainian. There is an English translation of the lyrics in your program. Once the platform party is assembled on the stage, Kirsten Schubert and Justin McGillivray will greet our guest with the presentation of bread and salt. This is a traditional Ukrainian welcome and a wish for prosperity and health.
few minutes, uh, Mr. Shatulsky will have much more to say about the Ukrainian Labour Temple and its history, but first, let me share just a little bit with you some of the information about the group that I represent, the Historic Sites of Canada's Board of Canada. Créé en l'année 1919, la Commission des Lieux et Monuments Historiques du Canada, Conseil le gouvernement du Canada en sait qui concerne les lieux, les personnages et les événements qui ont marqué l'histoire du Canada. Created in 1919, the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada provides informed and impartial advice to the Government of Canada on matters relating to the commemoration of Canada's history, in particular which persons, places and events should be recognized as being of national historic significance. The Historic Sites the Monuments Board has members from every province and territory of Canada who are scholars or recognized experts in a number of fields including history, architecture, anthropology, and literature. Over the past 93 years, the Board's recommendations have resulted in the placing of more than 1,900 commemorative plaques across the nation, identifying places, persons, and events of national historic significance. I hope that whenever you see one of these beautiful plaques, you'll stop to read it and so add to the public appreciation of Canada's history and heritage. Now I'd like to invite Mr. Robert Sechuk to provide a welcome on behalf of our host, the Association of United Ukrainian Canadians. Thank you. Good afternoon. Officials from Parks Canada, invited guests, members of the AUC Winnipeg branch, friends and supporters of the AUC. Good afternoon. It is my great pleasure and honor to attend this ceremony. Many of you know that I was born and raised here in Winnipeg, although I no longer live here for the first 25 plus years of my life. This hall is where I grew up and spent countless hours, so I consider this to be my home. Who would ever have thought that now, as National President of the AUC, I would get to welcome everyone to this momentous occasion in our hall. I bring greetings to you from the National Committee of the AUC on this historic event, and it truly is a historic event. The designation of this building as a National Historic Site, along with the plaque unveiling today, is beyond doubt a historic milestone. Today's ceremony completes the hat trick, to use a hockey term, of three historical designations, municipal, provincial, and now federal. This building and the philosophy surrounding it became the home away from home for hundreds and hundreds of first and second wave immigrants from Eastern Europe. It became the focus of Ukrainian culture and worker farmers, social and political activism in Winnipeg's North End. And the members and supporters had a huge role in defining many of the benefits that we enjoy in today's Canada. They struggled and agitated for social reforms such as labor laws, workers' compensation, mutual aid, universal health care, old age security and pensions. Many of the earliest leaders of this organization came from the Ukrainian Social Democratic Party and they were activists and visionaries. Part of the vision was the idea to have their own meeting place, where cultural activities, education, newspaper publishing, and, and social gatherings could take place. The leadership worked to inspire members and supporters to take charge of their lives, to refuse, <coughs> excuse me, to refuse to be passive in the face of those who would marginalize them and treat them inequitably. Theirs was a fight for social justice and to change social conditions for all. 
This hall was the center of this activity, and it was built mainly on financial contributions from ordinary people. And I, I believe that it remains the only surviving hall associated with the 1919 Winnipeg General Strike. Huge thanks must be given to individuals from the Winnipeg AUC who persevered in working for today's event. The drive and unflagging dedication of people like Myron Trudilski and Nolan Riley and others must be recognized. A huge thank you to all of you for your unending efforts. As well, thanks go to Parks Canada and their Manitoba officials who recognize the historical significance of this labor temple. Their cooperation and understanding led to today's event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Sajak, and thank you for coming all the way from Ottawa to be here today. I'd now like to invite Mr. Shatulski to offer a historical background address for today's designation. For me personally, this is a most joyous and an emotional event. For those as I who virtually grew up in this building, living through good times as well as experiencing some extremely turbulent events, this is a day to be always remembered. Unfortunately, those Ukrainian immigrants who had settled in Winnipeg well before the First World War and had decided to construct this labor temple 94 years ago, are not here to, show, to share this historic event with us. It was their firm belief in a vision, one that not only embodied hope for a better future, but one that also brought forth an unwavering determination and perseverance necessary to realize those dreams and aspirations within the harsh reality of their new country, Canada. On March 1st, 1918, members and supporters of the Ukrainian Social Democratic Party of Canada, subscribers and readers of the party's newspaper, Rabochi Narod, Working People, and participants of the Vinichenko Drama Society at a meeting in the Royal Theatre on Main Street made two far-reaching, momentous, historic decisions. The first, to construct the Ukrainian Labour Temple, and the second, to establish the Ukrainian Labour Temple Association, which would be both owner and custodian of the building. These people who had emigrated to Canada well before the outbreak of World War I were not political neophytes. Many had not only belonged to various political and radical movements in Ukraine, but had already participated in the activities of similar groups here in Canada. One of the first Ukrainian socialist groups was formed in Winnipeg in 1907. The song, Together Comrades, performed by the choir earlier, was first printed in Canada in Edmonton in 1909. The division within organized sectors of the Ukrainian community was, a definite, was of a definite political nature. Socialist ideology on one hand, as opposed to the prevalent Canadian Liberal and Conservative Party doctrines on the other. Nonetheless, going through various structural changes characterized by inner problems and strife, socialist thought did not disappear kept alive and active by diligent and dedicated members and assisted by the newspaper Robochi Narod, Working People, founded in 1909. This movement finally coalesced in 1914 
as the Ukrainian Social Democratic Party of Canada. However, the founding members saw the association through slightly different eyes. As actors, actresses, and musicians, they looked upon that organization's activism through the eyes of performers. As writers and journalists, they saw this newly created entity as a vehicle for disseminating ideas and exchanging thoughts and opinions, not only through group discussions, but also through the printed word. As teachers, they also foresaw the need to create Ukrainian language schools, music lessons, and other activities for children. Through these eyes, the founding members had clearly laid out the road they had chosen to travel. All they required now was the building. Choosing Winnipeg's North End in which to construct their labor temple was obvious. It was a multi-ethnic working class community. Men worked in the CPR shops in Manitoba Bridge and Iron, Dominion Bridge and Vulcan Iron Works. They traveled to St. Boniface to the slaughterhouses of Canada Packers, Swifts and Burns. Women worked in the knitting mills and in the sewing factories in the area known today as the Exchange District and in the smaller shops and stores throughout the city. Therefore, it came as no surprise why Winnipeg's history-making 1919 general strength found such resonance within this community, particularly with the members of the newly formed Ukrainian Labour Temple Association. Towards the end of September 1918, a host of ethnic organizations and their periodicals including the Ukrainian Social Democratic Party and its newspaper, were banned as enemy aliens by a federal order and council just weeks prior to the end of World War I. This not only compelled the leading members to meet secretly, but virtually stop communication with supporters outside the city. Nonetheless, construction continued. Architect Robert E. Davies, who had agreed to design the building and to guide its construction, suggested to the building committee that a base relief be placed above the main entrance, which would show two clasped hands over a globe of the world, accompanied by the slogan, Workers of the World Unite. His suggestion was unanimously approved. It is still there for all to see. One month after the completion of the building, a new newspaper, Ukrinsky Robitnichi Visti, Ukrainian Labour News, began publication in March 1919 with the direct assistance of the Winnipeg Trades and Labour Council. It temporarily ceased publication just days before the start of the Winnipeg General Strike of May 15, but resumed publication two months later. During the strike, the building, the Ukrainian Labour Temple was raided by the Northwest Mounted Police who ransacked both the print shop and the editorial office and took the paper subscription lists. The first general membership meeting of the Ukrainian Labour Temple, which took place in 1920, included the participation of representatives from other Ukrainian organizations specifically from those that had been part of or affiliated with the former Ukrainian Social Democratic Party. Thus, the association began to assume a national character. The appearance of the newspaper Ukrainian Labour News in 1919 was followed with the publication of Holos Rubitnitsi, the voice of the working woman, in 1923. Farmerske Zhitya, Farmer's Life in 1925, and Sweet Molody, Youth's World in 1927. However, in 1922, the Winnipeg members, implementing another of the constitutional statutes, created the Workers' Benevolent Association in order to, and I quote, to provide financial assistance to the members of the Ukrainian Labour Temple and their families, and in general, to all workers and farmers in their time of need. 
1926, the youth section was formed so as to concentrate on developing activities for children and young people, the Canadian Board. The growth of the cooperative movement, particularly in the Prairie Provinces, also had a direct effect on the organization's policies. In 1928, the Workers and Farmers Cooperative Association was established, which laid the basis for the creation of creameries, fuel and lumber yards, bakeries, book and music stores in various parts of the country. Although the Ukrainian Labor Temple Association had begun its existence as a local Winnipeg-based organization, it had developed during its first decade into a full-fledged national entity. At its 10th convention in 1929, the following report stated that there were now 187 branches with a total of 5,843 members. There were 56 drama groups, 76 mandolin orchestras, 50 children's schools, 63 labor and farm halls, four per periodicals, Ukrainian Labor News, published three times a week, Farmer's Life, a weekly, the monthly Working Woman and Youth for the World. They were all printed by the presses in the basement next door. Most of those present at the first meeting in 1918, particularly the leaders, were, relatively speaking, young. Matthew Popovich, whose bus is over there, was 28. Ivan Novizinski, John Navis, who was an activist and one of the last ones to pass on, was 30. My father, Matthew Shatulski, who was in Edmond at the time, at 39 would be considered well on in years. <laughs> One of those present at both inaugural meetings, my father-in-law Nicholas Matejic was 25. And it makes me wonder how many of us, particularly during our 20s and early 30s, would have been prepared to assume such an undertaking and its associated responsibilities. And, as was the case for some, not as yet having received their naturalization papers. We owe a great deal to those who met at that initial two meetings in 1918 for their vision, their dedication, and their perseverance. They withstood threats, vilification, boycotts, working place discrimination, parliamentary sanctions, suffered, suffered sentences in jails and internment camps. Today we greet this designation not only for the building's structural architectural relevance, but also as a reminder of those who devoted so much of their lives in order to attain that which we honor today. Thank you.
Parks Canada, and the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada, the recognition of the Ukrainian Labour Temple as a national historic site would have not been possible. To all of you, we are truly thankful for your vision and dedication in achieving this. We are honoured that the Government of Canada is recognizing the Ukrainian Labour Temple as a national historic site. 94 years ago in 1918, Ukrainian workers and their families formed an association to build a cultural, political and social centre for their community. Their purpose was inspired by the progressive ideals of the time and the progressive traditions of the Ukrainian immigrants. Their vision for this place was broad and all-encompassing. At the back of the hall, there is a plaque which records what the founders of the Labour Temple said at that time. It reads, The Ukrainian Labour Temple in Winnipeg is being built not only for the benefit of Ukrainian workers in Winnipeg, but also for all Ukrainian workers and farmers in Canada. It will belong to us all. Their vision has not been forgotten, and what is now almost a century of activity in the hall, has been demonstrated to be true to that vision. So it is important that today we also recognize and honor the collective effort of the members of the AUC to ensure the continued existence of the Labour Temple as a centre of progressive activity. What was said 94 years ago today has become a broader vision. The designation of the Ukrainian Labour Temple as a national historic site means that its rich history and heritage will now belong to all Canadians. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gladys. Now my pleasure to invite Ms. Packer to the podium to bring greetings on behalf of the Parks Canada. Thank you, Dr. Rick Wishart. And thank you to everyone for joining us here today. C'est un grand plaisir de représenter Parc Canada aujourd'hui à cet événement pour souligner l'importance du Temple du Travail ukrainien. À titre de lieu historique national en Dévoilé, une plaque commémorative de la Commission des lieux et monuments historiques au Canada. It's a tremendous pleasure to be here today as a representative of Parks Canada at this special event to commemorate the importance of the Ukrainian Labour Temple National Historic Site by unveiling a, a Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada plaque today. The Ukrainian Labour Temple has been a mainstay and a focal point for the Manitoba Ukrainian community for nearly a century. As a political centre, the Ukrainian Labour Temple was the hub of a movement dedicated to improving the circumstances of Ukrainian workers and farmers, and was the headquarter of several organizations that provided educational, mutual aid, charitable, and other services. During the Winnipeg General Strike of 1919, a political event in Canada's history, the Labour Temple was a gathering place for strikers of Ukrainian descent. Their steadfast dedication during that turbulent period continues to echo to this very day. Structurally, the Ukrainian Labour Temple was designed to be grand in stature. Its neoclassical architecture and large auditorium make this building the largest and most impressive Labour Temple constructed by an ethno-cultural community in Canada. To this day, the Labour Temple serves as a base for the expression and celebration of cultural traditions and identity and for the coordination and support of Ukrainian performing arts throughout Canada. In fact, the Winnipeg Mandolin Orchestra, managed out of this historic building by the Association of United Ukrainian Canadians, is celebrating its 90th anniversary tonight and is the oldest mandolin orchestra in the city. Congratulations. For these reasons and more, Parks Canada is very proud to dedicate a plaque to the Ukrainian Labour Temple National Historic Site of Canada so that all Canadians can understand and appreciate this special place that this building holds in our history. Designation 
and commemorative plaques placed by Parks Canada and the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada are part of our, our government's ongoing efforts to conserve the nation's historic places and to present them to Canadians for their role in recognizing these elements that make up our distinctive Canadian identity. Parks Canada and the Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada deserve our gratitude. La Commission des Lieux et Monuments Historiques du Canada a vu le jour en 1919. Elle est composée d'éminents historiens et d'experts de chaque province et territoire du Canada. Elle collabore étroitement avec Parc Canada à la protection et la promotion du patrimoine canadien. The Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada began its work in 1919. It is made up of respected historians and other specialists from every province and territory of Canada and works closely with Parks Canada to promote and protect Canadian heritage. Thank you, Dr. Rick Wishard, for all your time and effort spent in promoting and protecting Canada's national heritage. Our nation is vast. Our story is diverse. I encourage you to explore that rich history. Be inspired to discover defining moments that make us unique. Creating lasting memories and connect with fellow Canadians through our shared history. Become custodians of our cherished past and be ambassadors of our national identity. Our stories are yours to share. And government alone cannot spread the word. It takes interested and dedicated individuals to champion our history and heritage and invest time and energy in promoting and safeguarding our national treasures and stories. For helping us in that important responsibility, I would like to thank the Association of United Ukrainian Canadians for everything that you have done as stewards of this national treasure. Your efforts over the years have ensured that the Ukrainian Labour Temple National Historic Site of Canada will continue to be an important part of the historical fabric of Winnipeg, Manitoba, and all of Canada. Merci. Thank you for your kind words, Marilyn. And it's now time in the program to unveil the historic sites and monuments board of Canada plaque. I'd like to invite the platform party to take your places at the plaque for the unveiling. And once the plaque is unveiled, we'd like to give you the opportunity to take the photographs and we'll have a reading of the inscription on the plaque as well. Ce bâtiment imposant 
construite en 1918 à 1919, fut au cœur d'un mouvement radical de gauche pour l'amélioration de la condition des ouvriers et des agricultures ukrainiennes. Il abritait une imprimerie et le siège de nombreux organismes d'éducation et d'entraide, en plus de servir à la promotion des arts de la scène ukrainienne. Le temple fut aussi un lieu de rencontre important durant la grève générale de Winnipeg de 1919 et pour le Parti communiste du Canada jusqu'au des années 1950. L'édifice néoclassique, qui a conservé son rôle communautaire et culturel, demeure l'un des plus grands temples du travail au Canada. Ukrainski robitnici dim. Zvedena u 1918-1919 rokah ця impozantna budova bola centrum radikalnoho ligovo ruhu, jaki prahnal polipšiti dolju ukrajinskih robitnikov ta farmerijov. V njomu znakodela se drukarnja i štab portiri kilkoh nacionalnih organizacij v spravah osvite in vzajemo do pomohe trudjaščih. Vim bol takož vipravnim punktom poširjenja ukrajinsko teatralnega mestectva in složil v njem zmis zborju dle učastnikov Vinipeskoho zahaljnega strajku 1919. roku in dle komunistični partiji Kanade do 50-ih rokov menolovo stoletja. Cej velični neoklasični budenok in dosi zberihajo svoju rol v kulturnemu in romatskemu žiti, lešajoče se od njem z najbiši v Kanadi domev praci. Держа 